Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, Recreation Parks Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum, so we begin to call the meeting to order. Uh, approval of the agenda. Everyone has the agenda. Everybody Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Everyone has the approval of the minutes. Everyone, I think, said the, minute, the minutes ahead of time. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. First thing up, the director's report. Mike? Yeah. And I'll kind of merge four and five together and just run through some things for you real quick. Obviously, uh, the Jacksonville Jamboree was held. Uh, the first Saturday in May. We had a great event. If you didn't have the opportunity to go out, um, we're estimating, and, and it is an estimate, that we had anywhere between six and 8,000 people. We had um, over 70 basketball teams. We had a softball tournament with over 20 teams. We had rides for the young kitties, and we had great food vendors and entertainment, and all in all, and, and as important as anything I'm telling you, we had great weather. Yes. We had great weather. And, you know, with that came a great turnout. So uh, great event. Susan and the recreation staff, obviously, is along with Amanda are to be commended. That was a, a nice event that we were we and uh, the city were able to put on for our community. So good event for all. Um, Project-wise, uh, I talked with our engineering staff today. The Lejeune Boulevard Trail, the bids are due, due this Thursday, actually. Uh, hopefully, they'll come in within budget. Uh, I don't really have anything other to, to tell you than the bids are coming in Thursday. We'll obviously know more information. And we'll share that with you next month, and we'll go from there. Hopefully, we're, we're telling you next month that, you know, in two weeks or three weeks, they're going to start. Uh, but we'll find that out on Thursday. Um, you've heard us talk about a splash pad at Jack Amiet. We are working again with our engineering uh, staff to come up with an RFP to uh, put something together to get something out. We would like to have uh, that ready to go out by the end of June. We feel pretty good about that, so we're working towards that in hopes that by May of next year, maybe even as early as April, we'll have a splash pad at Jack Amiet. We'll cross those bridges as they come though, but just keeping you in the loop on that. And the other project you just need to be aware of, hope, hopefully some of you know this already through watching maybe some of the other telecasts on G10, is that the uh, agreement with this DOT and CDOT for the Grove has been completed, and we started to work on the Grove to the Beirut Memorial Grove. Oh. And so we, as a parks division, we've started work there to help bring that to uh, where it needs to be and, and hopefully uh, where it will be for years to come. On a side note, uh, our horticulturalist, Jason Smith, and I, uh, about three weeks ago, uh, went to Tennessee, a little community called McMinnville, Tennessee, yeah. and we went and looked at the trees. And uh, needless to say, the trees look great. Uh, very impressive uh, operation where we were. Uh, the the uh, vendor that we're dealing with is, has a 600 acre tree farm. And I've never seen anything like that. That was a very impressive operation. 600 uh, acres. 600 acres, yes. Wow. And we saw a lot of it, but in the big picture, we didn't see, see any of much it. of anything, <laughs> you know, in the big picture. And yeah. it was neat the way he ha has them staged out. Each, each species, you know, of they're at this level and then we move them over here to this level. So uh, we look forward to the to getting those trees in late September and early October and moving forward with the growth. Just wanted to bring you up to date on not just the Jamboree, some of those pro projects, and then maybe go into the new business, which is where we're at today from the programming side as well as from the park side. And, and I can tell you from the park side, we're mowing. <laughs> That's what we're doing. I will tell you, uh, we've talked about this a little bit. We've, uh, we do have three mowers that we're utilizing uh, propane with. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, that's working pretty good. We don't have enough data yet to, to tell us that it's, you know, it's this much of a cost saving. 
uh, we do feel like we are going to see cost savings just from what we have. Um, they're working well, and uh, I think this is a good program for the city. And of course, environmentally, it's it's definitely a good program. Uh, we've recently done uh, some uh, re-landscaping at the landing to make it more uh, maintenance friendly. Uh, it was taking us about four and a half hours to maintain that site. We've cut about two hours off of that. So again, trying to be more efficient at what we're doing, we were able to uh, really just kind of tweak what was there to make it more user friendly from a maintenance standpoint, but also keep the integrity and the look of the landing the way it should be and the way it needs to be. So just be aware of that. On the programming side, um, we have youth baseball and softball that started two weeks ago, I believe. It's going well. Um, I think we have about the same amount of teams we had last year. Uh, adult softball also is going well. And we are in the midst right now of having registration for our summer programs, which I believe is going extremely well. Um, and I know our camps are starting to fill up. So if you're out there watching and you want to be or have your children a part be a part of our summer program or our camps or any of our activities i think you need to go ahead and make that call and, and get them registered with us because our spots are filling up and that's really our report from the recreation side and the park side okay uh won't be any planning planning advisory board liaison report or council liaison report member comments anybody have any any comments on like the right. summer program did we uh, raise the cost they stay the same as last year stayed the same, same. Uh, for their voyager camp it's a hundred and ten dollars per session for residents 165 for non-residents okay. and then the base camp um, that one did increase it was 40 it is now 60 for residents and 90 for non-residents so now the boys and girls club they're they um, cut off one of their uh, uh, their facilities mm -hmm. So I don't know how, how that affected the city. To get well, and we may see that happen. We may. I mean, that that may be something that happens as registration yeah, right. conti ten continues, and we may see an influx where we mm -hmm. wouldn't have seen that before. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've seen the work that they've been doing on the island. You know, that uh, Dr. Woodard talked about the islands. Yes. And I think they're going to be a little. Thank you for bringing. Anything will be an improvement. But thank, thank you for bringing that up. The, the island on um, on Johnson Boulevard, obviously, if you've not seen in front of the cemetery. Yeah. Uh, and as well as I believe the flagpoles are up. I'm not sure. I don't know if you've noticed the flagpoles out in front of the Freedom Fountain. Uh, that's a definitely a nice gateway to the downtown. Mm -hmm. The island looks good. We're maintaining that, and they're still in the process of finishing up the islands on 17, which basically are at the Exxon Light, yeah. where Old Bridge Street and 17 kind of merge into one, and then coming down uh, north in front of uh right before you get to johnson boulevard right. right at that intersection there's some more so you know we're, we're trying to take one step at a time yeah. and make jacksville look a little nicer the one that's right in front of the central cafe i notice sometimes there's some water there is that uh they have a sprinkler system in there are you now you talking the old central lunch yeah okay <laughs> Well, the one on cheney has no water but the okay. one on 17 has a drip line in there and actually uh, you know, DOT is installing those islands, and then we'll take them over and maintain them. And I think what they've done, and we noticed it this weekend, is I think they might have their water on a little too much because it, it almost looks like it's leaking. Right. I don't think it's leaking as much as they might want to. I think they're putting too much water out. Uh, but we have a, we have notified DOT of that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> but we did we did actually email about that today. And I do have just I guess one more thing. Um, Drones, they're becoming more popular. I'm sorry? Drones? Drones. Is there anything that we have in the parks and recs, to, uh, requirements, anything like that, or any complaints? No, uh, we've not encountered anything like that yet, and I don't know that there are any city ordinances in place yet that would govern those. That may be something that we have to look at. I, I guess I would treat a, a drone as a motorized vehicle, mm -hmm. which we don't allow in parks. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it is. Same thing like the a motorized vehicle. Though. No, it's it's kind of like a helicopter or a plane that they right. fly. I just yeah. you know they hear more about them in the news. Right. And, you know, Photographic I, people and yeah. And so I didn't know if we had anything. I guess city ordinance may think about that if we mm -hmm. had anything with that. Or not. Some point they may have to address it. Yeah. Right. 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 
Because, you know, I went, if my kid's at a park playing around and someone mm -hmm. out there playing with their drone, mm -hmm. I'm taking pictures of them. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. like that. So, okay. mm -hmm. It's a good thought. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. So, I think the FAA recently ruled on that, which, I mean, they said basically the government owns all the airspace from the surface up. I don't know, it might be something to, to venture into one day, look right. at or something like that, especially at the we'll park. We'll keep that yeah. in mind, yeah. You know, if we're having festivals and stuff and yes. people are out there flying those drones. I know we have one, so that's one that we use to record things. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Shadow, mm -hmm. Any other comments? What tree species are they going to plant out there in the world? The Chinese pistachio. Okay. It's a green tree during most of the year, but during the fall it will turn um, rustic and um, we're hoping that it'll be more of the military cut colors where it's the um, the red and the gold look crimson and gold look and uh, we hope it'll be looking like that by october when the uh, 23rd rolls around to but to be honest with you the weather is going to decide that you know i'm sure some years you may see it that way and other years you may not weather will decide right. that but i think you'll think it's it's going to be a pretty tree you know, mm -hmm. definitely Anything else? I had just one comment. Friday night I went out and looked at a little league ball games and really enjoyed it. Had all the all the fields very busy. Everybody seemed to be getting along fairly well. So no good. problems looked really good. So they deserve people out there deserve a lot of credit and work hard to make that work. Thank you. We'll pass that along. Pass that along to them. Uh, Park reports, uh, Wooten Park, water fountain work, bathrooms clean, uh, there's about nine folks out there. Uh, they're, they're on that 